My family had a canoe when I was a kid, so I grew up learning how to canoe. And then later on, I learned how to kayak. If you know how to canoe, it's not that hard. It actually might be a little easier. But I think I was an adult, maybe in my 20s, the first time I encountered a rowboat. I was at a camp where all of the canoes and the kayaks were already taken out. And so I said, I'll just take this rowboat out. And I sat down, and I couldn't figure out how the oars worked. It made no sense to me. I thought, how is this going to work? And then someone from the shore said, you're sitting in it the wrong way. And I said, I'm supposed to face backwards? They said, yes. That's how you row a rowboat. And that's also how life works, too. You face backwards. You can't see where you're going. You can only see where you've been. And things only make sense looking backwards. Life is like rowing a boat. And we're seeing a glimpse of that in the fact that the gospel today is not about Mary's immaculate conception. It's about Jesus' conception. And that's because Mary's immaculate conception is not in Scripture. It was not understood during her life. If you had said to her the words immaculate conception, she would not have known what you meant, and her parents wouldn't have known either. It was only sitting in the rowboat later, looking backwards, that we recognized, ah, I see how God was at work there. The Immaculate Conception says that Mary's life was blessed from the very beginning, from the very first moment. It was blessed from the moment of her conception by her parents, Anna and Joachim. And what she benefited from in her Immaculate Conception was a special gift. And it's the gift to not have to deal with what all the rest of us have to deal with. Original sin. That, that weird, mysterious drive in us that makes us so often choose the wrong thing. That addiction we have to doing the wrong thing so that none of us can go a whole day without in some way, veering off the path we intended to follow. Mary alone was freed from that. Now, you may ask, why? Why would God do that? And, you know, on a solemnity like this, we place ourselves humbly before God, and we say, God can do whatever God wants. It was a gift that God gave her. It is what you would call a miracle. And that's how God sometimes operates, violating the normal laws of how life is supposed to work, the way the world usually operates, to do something that has an incredible infusion of grace in it. And we see that God's decision was not in vain. Mary put that gift to excellent use. That miracle was not wasted on her. She kept using it, even though she didn't fully understand it. She put it to use again and again and again. So what miracles has God blessed you with? The miracle that Mary had, only she would have because it was specially picked by God for her life path, for her journey. But each of us have a journey. And God has a particular miracle in mind for each one of us custom-fitted to our path. What miracles has God produced for you on your journey? Two summers ago, in 2016, we had a wedding here at the 1130 Mass. Some of you are smiling just thinking about it. It was wonderful. That's very unusual. Not many parishes have a wedding at a weekend Mass, but people loved it. In fact, they loved it so much that Frank and Christina decided to do the same thing this past summer. 
The couple that first did it is named Chris and Lauren. And at that time, they had been dating about five years. They met at a baptism. You see, he was the godfather of this little baby girl, and she was the godmother. And they did not know each other. But if you watch the video of this baptism, you see them receiving the candles from the priests and looking at the light, and then she looks at him. And then he looks at her. And you see their path was blessed from the very first moment. They were given a special gift that this relationship would be rooted in a sacrament. And if you were here that day, you may remember this. After a couple exchanges the vows, it's time to bless the rings. And often someone will hold those rings in a small dish while the priest says the prayer of blessing and sprinkles holy water on them. And so out from a pew came a little figure with the rings, a little five-year-old girl, the baby who they were there for the baptism of. Their goddaughter was present to hold the rings that they would wear for the rest of their lives. Their path was blessed from the very beginning. From the very first moment, God gave them a story that no one else would have. A special blessing that was just for them. How about you? Who are the people that God has put on your path at just the right time for the journey that you've been on? What are the circumstances in your life that only God could have arranged that helped things to work out just the way they were meant to be? What miracles have happened to you? Things that you know were directly from God that you could not have manufactured on your own. Chris and Lauren have now been married going on three years, and it's been wonderful, but it hasn't been easy. They've had plenty of setbacks, but they can always rely on knowing that their path was blessed from the very beginning. And so was Mary's. And so is yours and mine.